Hi, my name is David Johnson and today I'd like to take you through a basic introduction to polygons. We'll start by looking at the definition of a polygon and then look at a few of the many ways a polygon can be represented. Finally, we'll examine how we would go about determining if a particular point is contained within a specific polygon. The word polygon derives from two Greek words meaning many angles. Before we can discuss how to perform mathematical operations relative to polygons, or even discuss how to represent a polygon, we must have an agreed-upon definition of what a polygon is. A polygon is a finite subset of a plane, the boundary of which is the union of a finite set of pairwise disjoint vertices and relatively open edges, such that each vertex has an even number of incident edges, and such that the two vertices of each edge are in the boundary. Now that's quite a mouthful. Let's break down that definition into understandable terms. A polygon is a finite subset of a plane. This means that every region on the plane could either be classified as inside the polygon, outside the polygon, or on the boundary of the polygon. The boundary of the polygon is made up from the combination of a set of pairwise disjoint vertices, meaning that no two vertices are in the same position, and each set of two vertices only shares at most one vertex with another set of two. Each of these pairs of vertices are connected by a relatively open edge. This set of edges or lines, when combined with the vertices, make up the border of the polygon. The last stipulation is that each vertex of a polygon must be connected to an even number of line segments. For example, all of these vertices have only two incident edges. These vertices have four edges. These two vertices, however, have three incident edges. This is a problem because then we don't know necessarily what is inside the polygon and what is outside the polygon. Let's look now at some of the different ways that we can represent a polygon. We'll go over three different ways, including an ordered set of points, a set of triangles, and a line base representation. An ordered set of points is a commonly used representation of a polygon. This involves simply storing a set of points that are in order and then connecting each vertex to the next to construct the border of the polygon. From here, all that is necessary is to determine what is considered inside the polygon and what is considered outside the polygon. To do this, we'll use a point membership classification test, which we'll discuss in just a moment. We could also represent a polygon as a set of non-overlapping triangles. Any polygon can be broken down into sets of triangles through a process called triangulation, and simply storing and then redrawing these triangles will allow us to reproduce the original polygon. We can also represent a polygon by the set of lines that make up its boundary. With this representation, defining the interior of the polygon may be more difficult than with the prior two representations. Point membership classification is the process of determining whether a point is inside the polygon or outside the polygon. I'm going to cover two different implementations and then we're going to see them both in action. One way we can determine whether a point is inside a polygon is to shoot a ray in any direction that doesn't intersect the vertices of the polygon and then count the number of intersections with the boundary. For instance, in this polygon, we could simply say if the number of intersections is odd, the point is in, and if the number of intersections is even or zero, the point is out. A second way we can determine if a point is in a polygon would be to add up all the signed angles created from P to each consecutive set of two vertices. We can then classify what is considered in or out based on this sum. In this polygon, we could say that if the sum is 360 degrees, or 2 pi, then the point is in. Okay, now let's look at this in action. Here we have a basic polygon, uh, where the points that are being considered inside the polygon by the various algorithms are being colored red, and the points that are uh, outside are being colored green. You'll notice right away that there's some problems with the points that are on the borders. Uh, both algorithms, the infinite ray test and an angle summation, have various problems when it comes to, uh, it's not always consistent with regards to the borders. So what we're gonna go ahead and do from here on out is turn on separate calculation of the borders to calculate which points are on the borders first, uh, and then calculate of the remaining points whether or not they are in the inside of the polygon or the outside of the polygon. Now I can switch between the angle summation algorithm and the infinite ray test like this. You'll notice no change in the polygon. For this particular polygon, both algorithms are showing the same uh, subset of points being considered inside. 
However, this is not always the case. For instance, why don't I turn this polygon into a basic star? You'll notice that the polygon actually crosses over itself several times. And we have this area on the inside of the polygon, which the angle summation algorithm is classifying as inside the polygon. However, if I switch to the infinite ray test like this, you immediately notice that all the dots inside are colored green. That's because the two algorithms that I have implemented are actually not the same with regards to determining what's inside a polygon and what's outside. And in the case of a non-convex polygon like this that has uh, self-intersections with an area inside with a winding number greater than one, the two algorithms actually differ. In summary, today we've looked at the definition of a polygon, various representations of a polygon, as well as different algorithms to test whether or not a point is contained within inside a polygon. That concludes today's lesson. Thanks for joining me.